Yeah. First time, sorry. <clears throat> 36 years ago, I was in Massachusetts, plus or minus a year or so. And uh, I was probably having what I thought was the best, absolute best time of my life. I was in a Christian coffee house. I've been accepted in there. I was made a director of over several things, mostly maintenance, but also booking and stuff like that. I was playing guitar. I was singing in a, in a group. They called us Vanilla because Gary, the leader, wanted it just to be plain. He said, Vanilla's going to play tonight, just plain vanilla. And I was doing some uh, fill-in preaching for the for the director of the of the group we'd started a church and I will be honest with you it was the best time of my life and I am so thankful to find myself back in that situation it's just it's just wonderful I just you cannot begin to comprehend how happy I am doing this again so here we go how bright is your light how bright is your light I'm going to give you some worthless information first, and then we're going to move right on. The output of light bulbs happen to have a lot of this stuff stuck in my head from years in that industry, so to speak. How Light bulbs are measured in lumens. Lumen is the measure of a light bulb. It's also measured in color renderings, how yellow it is versus how white it is. But lumens is measures the light output. So where do we stand on the brightness, the lumens of our Christian walk? The Bible says we're to be a light. And the well, same thing also says we're to be salt. Several ways we shine. If I could have the first um, verse, please. That's it. That's the first one. So take a look up here and we see a few things. We see... Faith, hope, and charity. Um, we can shine in a lot of ways, but I'll tell you a few that, that approach that. First of all, how do they know we're Christians? How bright does your light shine when you walk out these doors? How bright does it shine? We all know that when we're inside the church, we're all shining bright. We're Christians. We're raising our hand. We're praising the Lord. We're, we're teaching, preaching, singing, and everything is good. But when we walk out that door, because our world here is very small, that's a very large world out there, a very large world. How do, we, how do they know? How do they know? The Bible says that they'll know several ways. Actually, the first one is, how, how, what's, what's our speech? What is our speech? How do we talk? How do we carry on a conversation? We should be subject we should be meek we should be mild we should not be brazen in our speech we should not have any foul words in our speech to say the least the spoken word are we always careful to bridle the tongue the tongue it could be the best thing it could give people a good feeling a praise it could help people it could lift up people it could lift up parents it could lift up your children children it can lift up your parents by just saying the right words in the right attitude Ephesians 4.29 tells us, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. It doesn't say to the saints, because you would think, okay, in church, with the saints, it says to the hearer. And that's everybody. That's anybody you talk to. You should be giving them good verbiage. You should be edifying them in words. You should be uplifting you can either tear down with our words and our voice, or we can build up. Tearing down is not good. Not good. It does not be Christ-like. Christ-like Christian means Christ-like. So we shouldn't tear down. What does that mean? It means that, that when somebody else is talking about somebody at work, or somebody else is talking about somebody at church, or, oh yeah, I said it, <laughs> or somebody is talking about someone else, a relative, a uh, a, a, a distant cousin, a brother, a sister, and they're talking badly about them. Do you stay there and listen? Do you jump in for defense of that person? Or you just sit there and accept it and, and go along with it? So by your actions of words, that identifies your light as well. 
Matthew said in 15, 11, not that which goes into the mouth defileth a man, but that which comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. In other words, it ain't what you eat. It's what you speak. It doesn't matter what you eat. What you eat will either be good for you or bad for you, and it won't really affect a whole lot of other people unless they see you eating Twinkies every day. Then they might have something to say about it. But anyway, what comes out of your mouth? What are you smiling for, group? (laughs) It's what comes out of your mouth that defines you as a Christian that shows you how much light. So there goes one light bulb up a little bit if you're doing the right thing, if you're talking the way you should talk, the way, how will they know you are the light of the world? Colossians 4, 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Again, what did he say? You're the salt of the earth, right? Seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. God will give you the right words to say if you allow him, if you're subject. But if you are so concentrate on dragging someone else down or being a part of that dragging them down, And listen, by the way, before we go any farther, I'm preaching to Kevin. If I say you, there's several places in here I mean we, trust me, and me. So they'll, they'll know by our speech. Now listen, these are just a few of the already, the 21 verses that I found on a quick search without getting into my my concordance. Just a few of the 21 I quickly scanned and picked a few out. Obviously, God impressed the writers of his holy word with quite a bit about how you speak. It meant a lot to how you speak to identify yourselves and you shed the light. Attitude. That's another way we shine, right? Another way that we shine our light is our attitude. Do we really need an example here? (laughs) Probably not. Probably not. Because a lot of times our attitude is somewhat less than light giving. Somewhat less than bright light. Oftentimes it's a very dark thing. You know, I work with a couple people who, and they, I call their personality toxic. What do you mean? Well, I mean that they, they're poisonous to me. You, you, they just drag you down. Any of you that's ever been in the workplace or, or had someone like that near you, you know what I'm talking about. It, it's toxic. It drags you down. It doesn't do anything to edify you. That kind of attitude is definitely a pretty dim light, if light at all. You've got to show your Christianity to shine your light amongst men as Jesus told us to do by shedding the attitude. Now, of course, I'm talking about a negative attitude, but guess what? There's a positive attitude too. Just like the tongue can knock somebody down, tear somebody out, rip them apart, do more damage. It says it's the most powerful weapon. Even they say the tongue is sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, it, it's a terrible thing. It, it just destroys people. You can destroy someone with your mouth, with your words. That's all you can do. You can do, use that to destroy someone. And your attitude can do the same. What do you think it does to your coworkers, to your brothers, your sisters, your family, when you have a bad attitude? Turn down the light. You know, I like this because our lights, our lights are on a dimmer switch. They're dimmable. You'll see some bulbs you can sell that buy that sell dimmable. Our lives are dimmable. Our light is dimmable. You can either turn that rheostat up and have a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant white light, or you could turn that down to where you can't even read a letter. It's amazing, isn't it? We don't really need an example, so I only did one. Let this mind be in you, Philippians 2 5, which also is in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. What's that saying? Which also is in Christ Jesus. Taste Jesus' mind and adapt it. And it's his way of thinking, his attitude. The only time we ever saw Jesus Christ exhibit an attitude that I'm aware of, and we just covered that, Brother Jamie, was, uh, was in the temple. He had an attitude, and he had a right to have an attitude. He had a right to have an attitude there. When do we have a right to have an attitude? 
There may be some instances, but for the most part, your attitude should be cheerful. Your attitude should be positive even when there's nothing positive going on around you. Even when someone else is not positive, the most negative or toxic person, as I like to say, deserves to have someone around them that is counteracting that. That has to be a Christian. That has to be a Christian wanting to shed some light. If not, you just, as I was like to say, part of the problem, not part of the solution. How else does our light shine? Well, who are your friends? Who do you hang around with? Who do you hang around with? If you're hanging around with a bunch of guys that are, you know, I know you don't drink, but come on down to the park. We're just going to have a few beers and, and it'll be all right. I understand you don't drink. We respect that. You hanging around with that? That's toxic. That's a dimmer on your light switch, folks. On your Christian walk, that's a dimmer. It's going to take that down a notch. Well, yeah, I saw him in church Sunday, but then, uh, hey, it's Friday night. You know, he was at that party. Yeah, it was Joe's birthday. It was Joe's birthday. They all went out. I never saw him take a drink. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was drinking some ginger ale to make it look like he was so he could fit in with those people. Anything to fit in with this world. You've heard this one before on our friends. Psalm 1, one. How blessed it is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Okay, so... And I've heard this preached a little bit. There's nothing new under the sun, by the way. Solomon said it best. Solomon had all the wealth and power, and he said it. There's nothing new under the sun. So I'm not going to try to invent the wheel here tonight. I'm just going to tell you what the Lord's laid on my heart about our walk and our light shining in this world, in this community. This community is our responsibility. These people around us are our responsibility. You say, oh, how's that? Cain, Cain asked a question when, when tested. Cain says, am I my brother's keeper? Kind of innocently avoiding the fact that he just murdered him. Am I my brother's keeper? If Cain were standing here, I would answer emphatically, yes, you are. Yes, you are. We are. You are. I had a message a while back talking about unsung heroes. Everyone in this building can be an unsung hero. Depends on how how you do it, how you look at it. How blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Walking, that's an occasion, occasionally. You're walking with them, walking by them, walking around them. Nor stand in the path of sinners. If you're standing in the path of sinners, maybe you're slowing down to listen a little bit. Maybe you're standing, you're slowing down. You're not moving on in your Christian walk like maybe we should. Avoiding those things which are toxic. Nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Okay, now you're sitting down, you become comfortable with that, with your friends. Friends that really are not going to do any good. They don't share your beliefs. All you could do is live your life around them, but do not sit in comfort with them. Don't stay anchored and don't hang around with them so much so that, you know, I always said that either... Your witness is going to change a sinner, someone that's not following Jesus Christ, who has a very dim light in this earth, according to we are the light of the world, or they're going to change you, or they're going to change you. Which way you want to go with that? I prefer not to stand in their company. I've got non-Christian friends, okay? But they have no misconceptions about where I stand. I told a couple people many times a few years back when I first started coming back to the Lord at this hunting camp. Hunting camps are not known for etiquette and proper manners or correct verbiage. But I was convicted enough to say, we're going to start saying blessing for food that God's given us. And I started. And now, whenever I'm with any of those people, they don't even blink. They know I'm thanking the Lord Jesus Christ for everything on that table and a lot of other stuff too. So they took off their hats and they bowed their heads. Not myself that I changed them, but God used me to turn my light up enough that they saw it. You're either going to be changed by them or you're going to change them. 
Be careful of your friends. Don't stand in the path of sinners. Don't certainly don't sit in the seat of scoffers. That's a toxic relationship, and it's going to dim your light, folks. Church attendance. Hebrews 10.25, probably one of the, 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 I would say, the flag scriptures on church attendance. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more. You know what I, you know what I think exhorting one another is? Hey, missed you Sunday. Missed you Sunday. Can you come on back to church here? We haven't seen you for a while. Is everything all right? That's ex- exhorting them. Exhorting them to come back into the fold. Exhorting them to come back to church. And listen, and so much more. We talk about this all the time. We think the end is coming near. Jesus Christ is coming sooner. You would certainly look at this world and think it's just about as bad as we've ever seen it in our generation. I have. I mean, come on, look at these last couple of years. I'm not talking about just politics. I'm talking about the tolerance of Christianity um, toward all these things going on. I'm talking about the intolerance of Christianity. I'm talking about the intolerance in this world and, and persecution, real persecution. Not they won't hang around with me because I'm a Christian. People are being really persecuted unto death. This world's pretty bad. So, and the more as you see the day approaching. Now, I'm preaching to the choir here tonight. Obviously, you're all here. But even more, that's how they're going. No. What are you doing Sunday? I'm going to be in church. Man, didn't you go last week? Yeah. Going next week, too. So those are some ways that you can shed a little light to this community. How bright is your light? How many lumens? I was actually, I was going to sing a different song tonight. So I'm going to have you help me sing just two verses of this song. That way there you'll answer, ask the question and, and answer it at the same time. <clears throat> Don't need any music. You've all heard it from the time you were children. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Come on, help me. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, some of you, I think you just took a trip back many, many years there into, because uh, everybody knew that song. That's wonderful. So, so here we are. We're going to let it shine. Are you going to hide it? That's the question. Are we going to hide our light? And we just said no. The one that really defines Christianity, though, I think the one that really, really, really is the most Christ-like, it shows the most Christ-like love. It's right there. Now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Right after that, however, there was a little bit of a message right after that. The first verse of the next chapter. And that is, as soon as I find it, I believe it says seek after charity. It goes on to say other things, but basically charity is the one you should seek after. It doesn't say seek after faith. It doesn't say seek after hope. It says seek after charity. Charity is a defined by helping someone I've got a little I decided to get into this electronic help thing here it's hold on screenshot 
Charity. Yes, thank you. Look at that. I'm not used to having resources. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you prophesy that you may prophesy. So follow after charity. Didn't say follow after hope or love, or I mean, or, or uh, da, da, da. faith and hope. It said follow after charity. What's that mean? That's the one we should seek after. Charity, love, the agape love of God. There's nothing purer than that. You see, charity is not just going about giving away old stuff and volunteering when you have the time. It's a continuous effort. A continuous effort. A continuous effort. Not just one day a week for two hours. It's a continuous effort. We're not to slack off on it. It's a continuous effort to make life better for others, especially those that have less than you, no matter your financial situation. Right now, there's always something you could do to ease other people's suffering. That's how charity should be. It's not about what you can give, but what you're willing to give. What you're willing to give. A few things to talk about charity. First of all, oh, guess what? I had it written down here. It's difficult to win someone over with pure logic and salvation. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense to them. You know, I've told you many a times, I was loved into heaven, scared out of hell. But I was loved into heaven. There were people that cared about me, people that cared about a young serviceman, willing to take the time, show them a good time, but there was a message. It first started in Memphis, Tennessee when I was at school there. They had horses. I love to ride horses. haven't ridden them hardly since, but but they they would feed you and everything else, but guess what? At the end, there was always a hook. You know what? There was always a hook. They would start telling us about Jesus Christ. It was love that got me there. It was love. It's difficult to live somebody over with pure logic, 1 Corinthians 2.14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, they have to be discerned through the Spirit. They, they, they are fed to you not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense. That's how you understand them. Not with screaming. Not with screaming, telling them they're going to go to hell. Not with spitting. Not with foot stomping. Show them God's love through us. That's the charity, God's love through us. Show them kindness to words. Baby doesn't bother me crying. I hear it often enough. (laughs) So, but anyway, uh, the same tongue. Kindness through words and actions. That same tongue that can drag people down can show them that love. Turn up that rheostat a little bit. Let's get that light a little bit brighter. Maybe it's an encouraging word. You know, it's okay, too, to tell somebody. I, I don't know if I asked you this, Brother Jamie, before or not. But should I tell someone I'm praying for them? Yeah. Sometimes it's it's concerned vanity or something. I will tell you this. Only tell them you're praying for them if you're going to pray for them. You probably noticed my post. or kind of like, eh, what's he doing that for? Praying now. Because if I don't pray now for that person, there's a good chance I won't pray for them. I'll forget. Life will get in the way. And then what? You've told them a lie. You've lied about a spiritual thing. So it's all right to tell somebody you pray for them, not to get your ego up, not to brag about it, but to bring encouragement to them. It's okay to hold somebody's hand or to be on the phone and say, let's pray now and mean it and hurt for them. Hurt as much for them as you've ever hurt for anything. They could tell genuine. They can tell fake. Be genuine. So how does that light shine? By praying for someone and meaning it. The same tongue that tears down could do so much to build up someone. 
if it's used in the right way. Kindness, words, action. It's okay to tell someone. It's not okay to tell them if you don't do it. Maybe it's an encouraging word, a shoulder to cry on. We see that a lot here, and I'm, I'm happy for that in this church. I've seen several of you women gather around somebody that was hurting and take that time unselfishly. Maybe it didn't mean getting out of here in time to go to dinner with somebody else or, or to, to tend that pot roast in the crockwood or whatever, but I've seen that here in this church, and that's encouraging. That's shining your light. However, it's shining it in here, but that's fine too. We need some light in here sometimes, guys. We need some light in here sometimes. Sometimes it needs to be a little bit brighter than what it is. Again, talking to myself. Taking a meal to someone or a dessert. A neighbor. Maybe there's a, someone living next door to you or maybe it's five miles away from you that can use a little help. Maybe they don't need the food. But that kind of gesture will show them your love. Just don't do it just, just because, you know, you've been told to do it. Do it because you care. That's a Christian light shining. Turn the rheostat up a little bit more. You know, we fix a lot of food sometimes, and oftentimes it's more than we can consume, you know. So bring them a little bit that's left over. Better yet, better yet, you want your light to shine a little brighter? Prepare enough to bring them some. Prepare extra, keeping someone else in mind beside ourselves. Things like that. Might be a neighbor. Oftentimes we prepare a lot of food and what happens? It just gets thrown out. Instead of doing that, let's think about where that can be applied, to whom it can be applied, and your light will shine just a little bit brighter. Maybe dessert. Might be a neighbor or a shut-in. As this, this generation and the generation before gets a little older, because of medical science, I know we've, we've seen a lot of people go from us in this last couple of years. But because of medical science, because of, of, of newer medicines and, and doctors and, and people that can diagnose things, we're living a lot longer as a generation. What's that mean? It means there's an 80-year-old living somewhere on your street that probably could use it. Or maybe even older. Or someone that is incapacitated. Or someone that's just lost one of those 80-year-old people. Someone, your neighbors, perhaps. And you know what? Maybe you don't know that neighbor next door, but you can let your light shine a little bit by walking over there and bringing them maybe a little something. You notice right now, I haven't talked about money at all. I haven't talked about money at all because that's the last thing. I'm talking about things that we could do no matter what your financial situation is. You don't have to have a lot of money to be kind. You don't have to have a lot of money to, to share Jesus' love with someone. You could be the poorest person on your block. You could be the poorest person in this county. But you still have these things that you can do for someone. Visit someone in a care facility. If they have a roommate, if they have a roommate, spend some quality time. I... I, I Put some more notes in what I typed out. I had time, and then I put in there quality time. Spend a little quality time with that person's roommate. Because I've been there, you've been there, we've visited people of our own from our own church and relatives in these facilities. And you're going to walk by those rooms, and you're going to look in there, and you're going to say, poor lady, because there's no one in there. Or that poor lady, because you never see anyone in there. Jesus' light will shine very brightly through you if you spend a little bit of time with that person. When you're bringing the person you're visiting something, maybe you bring their roommate a little something too. Maybe a little candy. That light will shine a lot brighter. It doesn't have to be much. These folks in these facilities don't need much. They need a little bit of love and a little bit of attention at times when they get none. It means a lot. It means a lot to these people. Your light 
shines a little bit brighter. A 10 by 10 room gets much smaller when no one comes to visit. A 10 by 10 room gets much smaller when no one comes to visit. You may be the only visitor they have that week. And like I said, yes, you probably can't just randomly go into rooms, but you know what? A lot of them meet down in that dining hall, in that area. A lot of that's, that's, so some of them folks, and I'm not getting a pity party going here, but for some of them, that is their highlight of the day is going down to the dining hall. You want Jesus' love to shine through a little bit? Go down there and just strike up a conversation with one or two. Maybe play a little game with them or something. Bring them some coloring books. Bring them some crossword puzzles. Reach out with what you have, and it doesn't have to cost you a dime, hardly. Very little money. What are you sacrificing? Sacrificing time, the most valuable thing. You will have more money. You will never have more time. So by sacrificing time, you're giving a gift that's much more valuable than money. We all have an infinite amount of money sometimes, but boy, I'll tell you what, sometimes we have, we only, all of us only have a finite amount of time. There's only so much time. When you sacrifice some of that, you're making a sacrifice. You're giving of yourselves. Volunteer to read to someone. I'm just giving you some ideas again. Haven't spoken one shit about giving any money yet. Oh, it's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> Volunteer to read someone. Offer to cut their grass, wash their car, pick up their garbage can and bring it back up to the house when you know it's sitting halfway out in the middle of the road and you just know that someone's going to smash that thing. Fix a neighbor's mailbox that has been smashed. Help a neighbor, help somebody on the side of the road. Be discerning on this, but help somebody on the side of the road that's got a flat tire. See somebody walking with a gas can. Maybe don't ask to put them in their, your car. In today's society, unfortunately, that may not be the best thing. Offer to take the gas can and go get them some gas. They may think you're sealing their gas can, <laughs> but these are things you, you we can do so much more. We, I, me, can do so much more for people than what we do. We have the ability to change lives. We have the ability to shed light where there is none. We have the ability to do more for people. If you want them to know you're a Christian, they'll know we're Christians by our love. That's what it says. By our love, by our love. They'll know we're Christians by our love. There's a lot of ways, folks, that we can shed a little light. And you don't have to be in the, the most physical person here. You don't have to be the richest person here. You don't have to be the most adept in mechanics or fixing a flat tire here, there are things we can do. I guess what I'm telling you is I, me, we, have to step up our game a little bit. If we want to show Jesus Christ love, it's not going to happen in this address at State Road 21. It does when they get in here. But how are you going to let them know that there even is here? How are you going to let them know there even is here? Be that person. Be that person that draws them in. I told you I spoke many, I don't know how long ago it was, on unsung heroes. Talking to people like Ruth, Naomi, people you don't, uh, don't really associate in, that, in that, that realm, but people that have made a difference for the Christian faith. Several of them. Read them. They're in the Old Testament. There ought to be a book of heroes. You talk about a book of martyrs, Brother Jamie. There ought to be a book of Christian heroes that affected lives. We talked about, about Jonah. Jonah saved or preached to people in Nineveh. Now, unfortunately, they didn't stick very long with it. But he also delivered those people on that ship to the Lord. People, people uh, make a difference. They don't even see it. Some so. Some reap. Moving on. Volunteer to read. Cut their grass. Take them grocery shopping. Nowadays, a lot of people will go ahead and have their groceries delivered to the house. But you know what? Not everyone can do that. Some people are not that 
challenged as far or are very, very challenged as far as electronics goes and doing things like that. You know, so a lot of people still write checks. Love you, honey. <laughs> but people could use all kinds of help. What I'm saying is not is is not about us all the time. We got to broaden our horizons a little bit, church. We got to look a little bit beyond these doors. We got to look a little bit beyond this road. Every one of us just about lives in a different neighborhood. Every one of us has different people we communicate with, co-workers, um, teachers, people at school. We all have an audience waiting to see our light. We all have an audience waiting to see our light. Offer to take them for lunch. Give them a ride. Here's, here's one where I think one of the best ones there. Give them a ride to and from church. Oh, I can't. Car's broke. Not a problem. Give me your address. A lot of people could use that ride to church. We have several here that can't get to church all the time. We should offer. We should actually offer. We should make it easy for them to get into the Lord's house if they find it difficult. Let them know that God, this should be sprinkled. Sprinkled. We're the salt of the earth, right? Right? We are, so that's what, I didn't say it, it's in there, trust me. We're the salt of the earth. We should sprinkle that salt on all of these visitations, on all these people we visit. We should sprinkle that salt. How? God put you on my mind. I was led by the Holy Spirit to come and talk to you today. I felt like God was leading me to you. God placed you on my mind because I think you're going through a hard time. Is there anything I can do? There's a lot of things that we can approach, a lot of ways. Finally, I promised I'd get to it. Finally, there are those that need a financial blessing. I've saved this for last because not everyone can provide this. That's why I gave us all. Kevin included, a lot of other options. If anybody wants to see them all, I'll be happy to type them out for you, and I'll research 20 more because there are things we can do to help people that will show them our love, our Christian love. They will show them the light that we are. uh, We're... We've got to put our light up from underneath the bushel basket. Maybe it's got the bushel basket has a few broken staves in it to where you can see some coming through. But I want my light to get a little bit better than what it is. I really need to. I need to step up my game. I'm fixing to lose my job here (laughs) voluntarily. I'm fixing to lose my job here in uh, just like about a month. I'm thinking, you know what? Too often, that's been an excuse for me not doing something. Oh, I got to work till 3 o'clock or whatever, you know, or I got to work Monday morning and I go in early and then by the time I get home. Too often, that's been an excuse for me. So I'm anxious to see, I'd like you to see, Kevin as well, of how I take this newfound uh, availability of time. How will I sacrifice the extra time that I'm being given? You know, I, I kid people at work. They tell me, oh, well, you know, well, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I'm married and I got a house. Figure it out. <laughs> That's how much time I'm going to have left. But seriously, though, I'll have a newfound freedom of time. Will I use that time? I hope I do to turn my light bulb up a little bit for people to see, for things I can do for people. I'm not wealthy at all we have enough we're not wealthy but it doesn't matter i've got so much more i can give everyone in this building has so much more you can give to someone every one of us can give something all those things i just mentioned not to mention hundreds more things we can do to help other people to show them we're christians oftentimes all they know about our christian life is i'm going to church on sunday 
That's all because what? Because that's what we broadcast. That's what we show. That's what we demonstrate. That's what we display. I'm going to church on Sunday. Oh, okay. Going to church. They don't know much else about us. If they do know much else about us, they don't know that we have an obligation to them. Are we our brother's keeper? Absolutely. We are our brother's keeper. I've always had a heart for some people. I don't know why. And and that's just grown so much recently. If God has laid on this on your heart, do not take credit openly if you want to give something monetarily to someone. Do not take credit open give credit or take credit rather openly. The Bible says do it with joy and anonymously as possible. Could I see Matthew 6, 1 through 4, please? Take heed that ye do not your alms, giving, gifts, charity, whatever you want to call it, be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest Thine alms do not sound a trumpet before thee. You know, they used to say, uh, the, the hypocrites, there we go, as uh, the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But when thou doest alms, let thy left hand know not what thy right hand doeth. And four, that thine alms may be in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Thank you. Galatians 6, 9, and 10. This has been something I've had um, had it in my car for a long while. I've got it on my desk in, in the, the back room there um, because this is what I really feel that is important to us at this time. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 10. As we have therefore opportunity... As we have opportunity, I think there's not a person in here who doesn't have an opportunity. I certainly have a lot of opportunities to do well, to let my light shine, to show people that I, Jesus Christ is in charge of Kevin Fifield. Jesus Christ is in charge of Kevin Fifield. I've committed myself, and if you ever see me slide at all, I don't say fall or backslide, don't give me that opportunity. If you start to see me stumble at all, I want you to bring it to me. The Bible says you should. But as much as you have opportunity, let us do good to all men. Doesn't say the ones we really like. Doesn't say the people that are not toxic. Doesn't say the people we can't get along with. It doesn't say the people that we don't we don't hang out with. It doesn't say that person because they're they're dirty and nasty looking. It doesn't say that person, that neighbor, because she's cogity and 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 yells and screams and, and acts like she's crazy half the time. It doesn't say that. It says all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. We've got some people that aren't here that still come, and some that don't. Unto all men, especially those in the household of faith, especially, but to all men, every one of them. Let your prayer be, this was also stickered in my car for quite some time. Lord, show me the need, provide the means, and allow me to do the rest. Show me the need. Provide the means. He always has. Anything I ever wanted to do or could do, God's always provided the means. So don't say you can't because there's some way that some of this stuff you can. God will provide the means, and he'll allow you to do the rest to let your light shine so all men can see. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Every man according as his purposes in his heart, so let him... Give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Obviously, we got to have the right attitude toward this. 
We've got to have the right attitude. We, can, we want to do it. And I'm going to tell you something, and you probably already know this. I'm sure many of you experience this. You will not get a better feeling than when you help someone else out. You will not feel any better than when you help someone else. It builds you up. I think the giver gets more than the give e. Giveth. Give the, the receiver. So, you want a blessing along with a testimony of your Christianity to someone else? Give. Your greatest blessing is hidden in the blessing of others just waiting to be carved out. Your greatest blessing is hidden in the blessing of others just waiting to be exposed, waiting to be carved out. Picture a statue, a block of wood, a nice sculpture or whatever. It's just something that's there. But when you go bat it right, it becomes something beautiful or something artistic. Your blessing can be that, but you've got to allow God to chip away the chunks. So let's ask ourselves, what can I do to let this community, my coworkers, my neighbors, my schoolmates, my fellow Christians, See Jesus' love shine through me. How can we let Jesus' love shine through? Because that's the objective of this whole thing, guys. It's not to make you go do something that you're uncomfortable doing. It's to make sure that you are identified as a Christian and there is indisputable proof in your actions. Be it your words, your <laughs> be it your words. You know, I'll, Brother Jamie said it best many times. I love to hear kids, and that's why I said don't worry about the baby crying because that means there's a kid in church. That means there's a kid in church. Let them cry. They're in church, hearing God's word even if they don't understand it. So what can I do with this community, my coworkers, my neighbors, my fellow Christians, see Jesus' love shine through me? Not just this week, not just tomorrow, Monday but going forth. So step out of your comfort zone. If your comfort zone is not going, is, is, is not going into the uh, uh, facility, the, the care facility, step out of your comfort zone. If your comfort zone is not going next door and giving maybe, hey, listen, I made this extra dessert. Would you like some? You know, God, uh, God and, and again, sprinkle this with God. Sprinkle that salt. Okay, that we're told to have. You're the salt of the earth. So what do I mean by that? I just wanted to let you know that, um, you know, God laid me on, laid this on my heart to give you this. That's it. Boom. You've dropped some salt. You've turned the light up a little bit, too. Just wanted to let you know that I've been thinking about you. Is everything all right? Is there something I could pray for you? Or you know of something. Would it be all right if I pray for you? A little bit of salt. The light got turned up a little bit more. Step out of your comfort zone. We can make a difference in someone's life. And once again, Cain asked the Lord, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Are we? Yes, we are. Our Christian witness is not always evident to everybody. What I'm trying to get across to myself and others that I know is that it shouldn't be a secret. Are we undercover Christians? Are we in the Lord's Army, the Secret Service Division? Or are we really proud of it? We need to be proud of of our faith. We need to brag on our faith, but we don't very often do that. There's opportunities out there. There's a lot of opportunities out there. All it takes is you want to turn the light up a little bit in somebody else's life. They need us, folks. The world needs Christians. The world needs Christianity. The world needs love. The world needs that charity. Why do you think, he said, the greatest of these is charity? 
pursue all these other things too, but he said, follow after charity. We need to be strong in this. And that's it, in a nutshell. It's all God laid on my heart, so I'll stop. So, thank you very much. Brother Jamie, if you would. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Sister Amy, put that graphic up there for us tonight. Now, abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Simply, charity is simply love. We know that there's romantic love, there's friendship love, but charity and love used in this verse that he shared tonight is an agape love. It's an unconditional love. You can love this love somebody you don't even like because it's unconditional. It's about loving them and showing them love because of your love for Jesus. As Brother Kevin was sharing tonight, I was thinking about my baby girl. She started off this school year and seemed like everything that she has on, whether it's a t-shirt or a lanyard or whatever it is, says, I love Jesus on it. She found out that there was fellowship of Christian athletes. I don't know if she has an athletic bone in her body. She's getting there. She's going to try out for track here in a couple weeks. So pray for it as she does that because she didn't make the basketball team she wanted to. But that didn't matter to her. She heard Christian, fellowship of Christians. So she not only joined that group, they immediately made her one of the leaders, directors in that group. But Gracie walks around with her Jesus t-shirt and her I love Jesus, different things but also with that smile she has and that kindness that she has to, to everyone. We live in a world that they tell us that because we're white, we're racist. That white folks and black folks can't get along. That was at, at the really at the tip and at the iceberg of hit this just a little bit ago. And I was kind of smiling because it was around the time that Bishop Underwood passed away it seemed like it was at the peak and I, I just smiled because I had just spent time ministering and being a part of a mixed congregation showing the love of God towards one another now there was something else that I was doing that day I was going to meet a, a, a black brother a black friend a ministry colleague I was pulling into school dropping Gracie off and Gracie gets out of the vehicle and who she meeting every morning before she goes into school to go to breakfast is a little mixed girl a little black girl I said y'all need to just shut up with all that racism stuff because it's not about a color of skin it's about who we choose to love and show love to and I said all that to say this one of Gracie's friends looked at her one day, and she's smiling, she's laughing. She said, Gracie, we figured it out. You love Jesus. We just we figured it out. We know you love Jesus. We invited, Gracie did, invited that friend to uh, the regional skate deal this past Monday night, and then asking that her mom said, you can start going to church with Gracie if you want to. She's been with us the last two Sunday mornings. And Gracie told me this morning she downloaded the Bible app to her phone. Why? Because somebody chose to love. Somebody chose to not just befriend someone and not try to hide their love for Jesus to be friends with someone. I'm not tooting Gracie's horn, but I am. Proud father. Proud dad. To tell you, all it takes is just a little love. A little love. Gracie only has as much money as we give her. She has as much love as she chooses to seek after. She can show as much love as she chooses to show because God's love never runs out. As I told you this morning, He never, ever stops loving us. We can't afford to stop loving others. Well, I don't even like them. Well, you better love them. Love them. 
with the love of God. Let the love of God. If you can't find love in your heart, let the love of God not just get in you, not just shine in you. We want God's love. He commended His love towards us while we were yet sinners. I think that we need to let that love that changed and reconciled us get through us that somebody else could see the love of God, that they too can be reconciled. Stand with me tonight. Let's consider the words that's been spoken to us tonight. Now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, all three of them are abiding. But the greatest of these is charity. How many would say, I need more charity, I need more love? Let's just gather around these altars tonight, spend some time in the altar and say, Lord, let that increase in my life. If it's the greatest, I need it to be the greatest thing in my life. I need it to be what fuels me. I need it to be what drives me. I need it to be what motivates me. See, charity, love will motivate you to get out of your comfort zone. Father, as we approach these altars tonight and as we bow, we call upon your name. We're thankful for faith. We're thankful for hope. We're thankful for charity. But your word says that we should follow after charity. You declared to us this morning that we need to follow you. And if we follow you, we're following charity because God is love. And everyone that loveth, loveth God. We just pray, God, that you just help us to follow heavy after you. and Follow strongly after charity. We shall love one another and love those that need it the most. Love through us, love in us, love through us is our prayer. In Jesus' name.